Dane, what's up, man? How you doing today? Excellent, excellent. Excited for another another uh, great night of interviews. Uh, I'm man, I'm giddy. I keep I keep thinking about this bucket list, man, as it keeps growing, right? And we started yeah. off we're like, okay, let's you know three or four names in the bucket list. You know, six months goes by, year goes by, our bucket list, and now it's turning into like a fifty five gallon <laughs> yeah. bucket a drum. Yeah, and even yeah. then, man, of like cool people that we just never thought would be blessed enough to meet, man. Tonight's the yeah, exception. Definitely. Um, I don't even have any witty banter for you. I don't have any like wisdom yeah. to give you because I'm just so excited about this episode. I want to explain uh, one of my favorite shows, and I mean this. Like I have shows I talk to you about all the time. You know, of course, I'm a big fan of Psych. Our buddy Adam Pally stopped by, and I'm a huge fan of the Goldbergs. There's a gentleman that's mm -hmm. been on the show, been oh, and like over 30 projects. This is just one of his many of his repertoire day and i said that word right yeah there you uh, go repertoire uh and this guy is just he's just crushing it at the top of his game i uh, got more to come which we'll talk about but it's an honor to bring on um one of my my favorite actors in the game right now very funny guy but also very serious and yep. doing a great great work for the community very positive so won't waste any more time and i'll get right down to it and bring on kenny red one kenny how you doing man hey guys i'm i'm doing pretty well myself i'm really happy to be talking to you guys. awesome oh, excellent thanks for giving us the time we appreciate it yeah, dude. Like I said, apologies for the angelic glow. I'm in a different studio tonight. I'm just a little extra heavenly tonight. So I apologize, you guys. Uh, my, my, my light guy decided to get some black lights installed or something. I don't know. But anyway, so Kenny, man, we've got some questions over the years of watching you and just learning to be like that house, household name that you are and just loving what you do. I'm going to take the lead with this one. I know before becoming that just hilarious, just like that that amazing ability to make us laugh and give us that laughter and the medicine that we need. There's got to be some stuff back in the day, man. Maybe like your first play that you were in as a kid or maybe your first thing that you acted in. Do you remember your first gig or as a kid what it was or you could tell us yeah, about it? Yeah, I, I do actually. Um, so when I was probably around 10, I did a play. I did Beauty and the Beast. Okay. And at that moment, I didn't really, I had no real aspirations. I always liked to watch like Disney Channel and stuff, and mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. But um, other than that, I I really didn't think the acting was a um, possibility. And overall, my mom was one of those moms that kind of put me in everything. So uh, she put me in basketball. You know, guys, I'm five six, so <laughs> <laughs> got it. Um, but basketball didn't hit. She put me in soccer. That didn't really hit either, and uh, she really desperately wanted me to learn how to play piano, and honestly, I just could not practice. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually, I did Beauty and the Beast, and I was playing this character named Maurice, which is Belle's father. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was doing a scene with Gaston, and he had forgotten his line uh, while we were performing, and I kind of improv my way out of that little uh moment and everybody laughed and then eventually he remembered his line and we went right back into the scripted version but um i remember that as being like the first moment where i learned that i loved acting yeah. um, is in that moment where you know you're you don't really have a choice you can't just you you really don't want to be like line or like anything like that especially when you're <laughs> the one messing up so <laughs> so yeah that was the first uh thing i did but then other than that i um basically a few weeks after that i heard this ad on the radio that was like calling all young actors come in audition for us and uh we'll see if we can get you an agent and I ended up going to this school in Seattle where I was, uh, where I'm from. And um, yeah, the rest is history. I signed with my yeah. agent. And then as soon as I got out here, the first professional thing I ever did was this Mario Kart commercial. Um, and yeah, after that, it took, took a minute for me to book anything else, especially theatrically. Cause I was, I was still pretty, I was a child and I was still pretty green. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's the first sort of like that's where the passion. That's cool. Came from. So we can wow. we can thank we can thank being the beast. I love it. Thank you, being the beast, for making this possible. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I love that. Dan, go ahead. <laughs> now, once you started acting and you started like kind of get a foothold and doing a project here and there, and you wanted to start maybe perfecting your craft a little bit more, were there an actor or two that maybe you looked up to that for kind of inspiration to kind of help you along? 
Mm. Yeah, what I find really interesting is like when I started, um, it was before like Crazy Rich Asians that kind of came out mm. when I was in college. Um, mm. but when I started, there weren't really very many Asian actors. Yeah. Um, doing like a variety of roles. So most Asian mm. actors are doing like I don't know, like kung fu movies or like very stereotypical mm. roles. And um, so for me, like a lot of my inspiration came from watching sitcoms like how i met your mother i really mm. loved how i met your mother 30 rock is another one of my favorites and um <laughs> i always like the career paths of like seth rogan and um jason siegel like people who made like a name for themselves on one thing and sort of parlayed that into mm. other things and into creating their own stuff which is something that i i actually yeah. uh, i'm really interested in right now yeah I got you. I, I love the parallel. To me. And again, we appreciate it. It's so good to, like I said, we love what you're doing. And uh, this, I've, as I told you kind of off the air, we love hearing that about you, that you're, you know, a prominent actor, Asian actor. We love what you're doing. And it's good to see, like you said, now the blend, the diverse roles, maybe, maybe kind of broadening the scope, if you will, like we're yeah. glad that it's happening. So this kind of fits right along with what we're, we're all about, man. Obviously uh, there's gotta be, like you said, some people that you've watched and all that influence. Right. And now it's cool to see this mark that you're leaving. And we always talk about the next generation and people like yourself, the next generation of actors yeah. is in good hands. People like you to look at, you care about the environment, you care about people, you care about your craft, you take big, big pride in it. Was there maybe one or two, maybe behind the scenes, uh, maybe a couple people, I know probably everyone's been good in their own way, but was there maybe one or two people that just kind of helped you, uh, maybe give you some pointers, maybe an influence or two once you got into the business mm -hmm. on your career? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> there's been more than I can even like think about, but, um, honestly, um, a lot of my experience comes from the Goldbergs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think two people that I really look up to are, uh, Wendy yeah, uh, McClend McClendon Covey. That's kind yeah. of a tongue twister. And then my um, my really good friend, uh, Sean. Yeah. Uh, I think both of them really. Uh, it's a perfect mix of having fun with what we do, which is necessary, and also having the professionalism to show up day like day on day and mm -hmm. uh, be able to. Uh, perform at the highest level and also uh be really funny while doing it yeah, yeah. Sean, a funny story is um before i booked the goldbergs uh it had come out already so there were like um billboards around where we lived in la and i remember looking at sean and turning to my mom and thinking wow that guy's got to be a jerk and it's just <laughs> something to do with like his like wide smile on the billboard. I was like, he's putting that completely on. And then I remember that first day I came on set. Um, he was he we were the same age, 14, and he was around here on me. And he just came up to me and he just gave me this big hug and he was like, Oh, well, it's really nice to have you here. <laughs> and um I love it. And yeah, so uh I really look up to those those yeah. And also like George Siegel. George Siegel was like was like yeah. a living large. RIP, RIP, man. Yeah. Yeah. And um he definitely gave Sean and I some pointers on how to like handle the ups and downs of doing what we do. Mm. Man. I was taking my daughter That's through, man, because it's cool now that because we still watch it. I go through it probably three or four times a year, really. There's a couple of shows I go through it. And she always I, I always say your 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 cameos is like to call it because it's always very powerful, your punchlines. You and JTP, again, I love the whole cast, but you and JTP always stole it for me. Like those are the funniest <laughs> lines that you guys did. So then go ahead, because you know I'll fanboy out, Dan, if you don't build me oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> and with your success in that show and, and other things that you've done, what what is this next, you know? three to six months hold for you or in even going into 2024 what's on the horizon for you yeah. in your career or in, in in maybe even some of your other passions in life so write and sort of create my own stuff because um i mean going back to when i was younger and kind of only roles that i could get were um sort of like the nerd character sort of like mm -hmm. uh um etc cetera, etc cetera. and so now i have this like want to write something that oh cool can, um yeah and a lot of my stories end up being um stories about 
people trying to fight against what other people or what the world has told them is like mm. their destiny. Yeah. And um, that's sort of the story I really want to tell now. And there's okay. a few things coming out in the new year uh, that I can't talk about, but um, I'm really excited for them to come out. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's sort of what the next three to six months has in store for me is mainly um, reworking a couple projects that I've been okay. uh, writing. So, so moving forward. So obviously uh, that's good to hear. And I think you'd be a great writer, man. Uh, a lot of what yeah. you said, Kenny, about what you uh, are passionate about. It's very interesting. Our show, whether it's the musicians or the athletes mm-hmm. that come on or the entertainers, I, I call that a broad spectrum. Our, our, yeah. our show has always been about, tell me I can't say, I can't don't yeah. put me in a box. Don't tell me I'm not allowed to do something. And that's why when I saw some of the stuff you've written, just kind of some of your, your thoughts, I'm like, this is exactly why I want you on the yeah. show. Cause your vision of what we feel is, don't tell me yeah. I can't do something. You know, I'm not going to be in your box. I'm going to be what I want to be. And I love yeah, it that you definitely. have done that, you know, so it's very cool. So yeah. let me, let me, let me stop for a second before I get a little tear. Cause it gets me all passionate <laughs> and worked up. Uh, Kenny, there's a segment every time I promise you that um, I guarantee you interviews that you've done. I guarantee this segment is called rapid fire. I'm willing to bet money that you've never had a segment like this. Okay. So <laughs> here, here's how it's going to work. There's five questions. Now it's all PG, but we're about to get weird for a second. It's really fun. Uh, and these questions, Dane and I already have these questions. We have bet on you on uh, what we think you're going to say. So we're betting on you, and the winner between Dane and I gets lunch. So pull for it, Dane, <laughs> if you want to throw me lunch, pretty cool. So I think you no, have you got okay. you got to swing it my way. I'm I'm countless numbers behind him, so yeah. I'll be broke for the next What's three going years. On, Dane? <laughs> yeah. So he's uh you know I'm a little bit more I think in touch with pop culture. I'm kidding. No, yeah. our fans oh, wow. bring us these questions. Our, <laughs> fan, our, fan, <laughs> our fans bring us these questions, man. So let me preface it. We love all these actors and everything that we're about to discuss. It's just more about a personality yeah. question. So there's yeah. no wrong answer. You pick from the heart on this, okay? So ready? So first question. You're called up uh, again. You know, child actor. You started off very young. Um, there's a lot of great legendary child actors in the world we can look back over the past 40 years. So they call you up and says, hey, we're bringing in a new event to ESPN. We're going to start doing celebrity child actor tug of war on ESPN. It's going to be pretty cool. So they're going to transplant you back in time when you started at the age of 14 and you get to pick your opponent. You get to have a tug of war match with one of these two child celebrities. You can go against the legendary Macaulay Culkin or the legendary JTT, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, in a tug of war match. Who are you going with? I gotta go with Macaulay Culkin. I think I'd win that one. <laughs> let's go, let's go, Dan. I had that one, Dan. Did you have that one? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You did? <laughs> okay, got you. So um, again, on the on the acting going back in time thing, 90s is very popular right now, it's very trendy. So again, they call you up and says, Hey, Penny, uh, after you know, let's say a little bit down the road. They say, we'd like you to be a part of this remake of one of these two iconic franchises. We're bringing it back as a reboot for 2025. And you can be a part of the reboot and be the main character for the reboot of The Boy Meets World, or you can be a part of the reboot of the next chapter of Saved by the Bell. Boy Meets World, Saved by the Bell, which one are you going with? It's got to be Boy Meets World. Let's go. I knew it. I had you. I did, man. Let's go. Two for two. Dane, how about you? No, I had. Uh, I was going with my youth, the Saved by the Bell stuff. That was... <laughs> Dang, tell hoping. your age, man. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Got you. So two for one on that one, Kenny. So next one, man. So you you have you get called up to uh, write. Speaking of what you said, you get to write a TV show, with, and you get to cast one of these two guys as the main character. But this is the thing: you have to write a TV show and make it comical. And the topic of this TV show, you have to write about different types of pasta. Okay, that's your TV show. You got to make it funny about different types of pasta. And your lead characters, you can go with. You can go with Tim Allen or Tom Hanks as your lead character about this show you have to write about pasta. Which one are you going with? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I think I got to do Tom Hanks because whatever <laughs> I'm going to write about pasta, it's not telling <laughs> enough apparently to get Tim, Tom Hanks away from movies. So <laughs> Let's go. got you. Let's go. Dane, did you have Tom Hanks on that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's real versatile. He's figured, man, he can do everything. He's yeah, maybe comedy. Talk- Talk to some pasta, you know what I mean? Like, we'll yeah, see. there you go. <laughs> let's go. I love it, man. And that, that's funny, Kenny. So two more man on this. I appreciate you. So last two. You're also called up to be a part of celebrity reality Celebrity reality TV shows happen all the time. So they say, hey, Kenny, we're going to do a, uh, a one-man reality TV show. We're going to film you 24-7, and you have to be encased in one of these two things for a month. Now, you're going to be safe. It's healthy and all that, but you have to film 
an entire month's episode inside of A, an igloo, or B, inside of a spaceship cockpit thing. It's just, you can't get out. Igloo, spaceship, which one are you going with? It's gonna be spaceship, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, man. I'm killing it. Danny, did you have that one? Yeah, I had that one. I, who's gonna go into igloo, man? It's cool. Well, I'm, well, I'm thinking because you can you know you can fish in there and all that. You can you know do uh, ice fishing and stuff. I'm a fisherman, so that's probably why I thought that one. But got you, got you. So last one, Kenny. Last one of the uh, of the celebrity stuff. So um, again, cartoons come to life for a minute, and they're adding a NASCAR event um, to another NASCAR race or something, and it's celebrity NASCAR event. So you get to face off in a NASCAR race on a lawnmower. Now, it's not a NASCAR, it's a lawnmower. And your two opponents that you can do this race with, Daytona 500, you can go against Bart Simpson or Morty from Rick and Morty. They come to life somehow. Who are you racing against? I got to go with Bart Simpson because I'm pretty sure if it's Morty, um, something's going to happen to my lawnmower. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I was go, gonna say he's putting go. he's putting he's putting it into the wall. I think. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> or Rick's gonna just do something. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dane, I'm proud to say, man, I went five for five. How about you, Dane? You uh, three one. for five. Uh, three for five. Dang. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Fall, falling farther farther behind, man. I'm well, never don't, gonna don't see. Feel... I'm never gonna see daylight again. Man. <laughs> well, can you don't feel too bad? He's gonna send me some uh, some like some uh, some chips and salsa or something. It's something too crazy. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Kenny. Hopefully, interviews you done. That's a little bit of a different segment for you, man. So I appreciate you being a good sport. Yeah, that was so. super fun. Awesome. So last segment, Dan, I'll give it back to you for the last segment, man. So, yeah, Kenny, uh, on this segment, we call it open mic. We open up the floor to our guests to maybe tell some of our younger listeners and you know younger viewers that you know aspire to do great things like you've done so far in your life, and maybe a word of wisdom to them. So we always ask. Do you maybe carry uh, some words of wisdom or maybe a mantra or a philosophy through your career so far? Or have you developed one that can maybe help some of our younger viewers or along on their path as well? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are going to tell people that they can't do certain things. Mm -hmm. But I think if every day you wake up and you just have the want to get 1% better, or if you don't have the energy that day, become half a percent better at whatever you want to do, that's going to stack up. And eventually you're going to prove all those people wrong. And then also another, another thing, this is more of a personal thing, but um, whatever you're into girls, boys, um, just don't chase them around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just do things for you and eventually it'll all work out. So. Just be you, right? Just be you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think man cuz uh, I'm I'm passionate about what you said. It's like, hey, you you we had a lady, we had a guest on last week, Kenny, and she's an MMA fighter and she was like, "Hey, if you just stay true to yourself, people will flock yeah. to you for who you are." Yeah. And like yes. I followed you for a long time and like, I just, you know, I, I just figured out Instagram. I've been just different posts and stuff. You really mm -hmm. have been yourself, man. I love that about you. And yeah, success has definitely. came because you've been genuine and this world is starving for genuine people. And I love that about you is I feel like this is the same person we get if we saw you in person or on, on camera, you really do stay true to who you are. We can't respect you enough for that, man. It's awesome. Yeah. You know? Oh, so. for sure. I don't think, uh, I, I never had a very large ego. <laughs> and, um, I also think that, um, relatively i feel i've always felt like a small fish and i think i'll continue to feel like that even as my career progresses but oh man well man it's a it, for us man i tell you kenny and again the show listening like i said worldwide when i talk to you we are very grateful it's all it's a it's a pleasure please let it be known this could be the first of many if you'd like to come back again sometime maybe talk about some new product that you're writing things like that this is always an open yeah. door on this show to have you back on anytime, yeah definitely right? so. Well, thank you guys so much. I, I really appreciate you guys. It's been a yeah, really fun interview. And um, yeah, just keep doing what y'all are doing. Thanks, man. Thank you. We'll, we'll be in touch and uh, we'll stay in touch and we'll get this out to the world very soon, okay? Thank you, my friend. Good. <clears throat> Have a great thank night, you, man. man. Take care. Thank you. Uh, so, Dan, I'm telling you, man, I, I had to kind of calm the nerves a bit. I had to kind of like yeah, pinch yeah. myself. <laughs> What'd you think of it, man? Cool guy, huh? Yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah. So, so to the point and... A lot of knowledge i mean been in the business for a while and and has learned a lot you could tell and always sounds like he's ready to always learn more so that's mm -hmm. what you want to hear from people that are successful that 
that still that hunger to learn more and to do better. And like he said, he's writing things and doing, doing mm. what he loves, you know, and, and always try to better himself and his situation. So it's great to hear those kind of things from people that are already doing great things. I made a note uh, of what he said, cause you know, always kind of get a little hashtag and a, a line. Uh, yeah. I made a note of stack up the wins. Uh, that to me, because it reminds me of one of our very first interviews, we had Kinsey Cackley on, she talked about being 1% better. Yeah. And he said yeah. that a little bit too. And he also said, yeah. stack up the wins, stack up your wins, whether it's like, Hey, today, you know, maybe today you made your bed. If you're a kid out there, yeah. listen, yeah. maybe tomorrow, you know, you got a, a 50 cent raise at work for the you know yeah. people listen, or maybe you ran your first quarter of a mile, you're not quite there yeah. to a half mile yet. Or maybe you booked your first commercial gig. I remember the, the days we were yeah. talking about this one. Again, uh-huh. we love it. We were ecstatic when we got our first interview with Jeff Lutz, a local radio <laughs> yeah. guy, Yeah, you know, and yeah. then which, which was a great lines. interview, you know, yeah. and it's like you say, one thing, uh, works on to the next and you gain a little bit more confidence in your craft as you go. Yeah. And no disrespect to that we love Jeff, but it's like, you think about you, you, as Kenny said, take it one day at a time when he got to meet, you know, uh, did the Mario commercial, he's probably through the roof. And then, yeah. you know, he does, he does the TV show, which is one of the most popular shows right now on TV. I'm telling you guys, yeah. if, if you haven't watched the Goldbergs, you, you probably haven't opened your eyes because it's amazing, you know? And like you said, the professionalism of this cast, but now to be cast in that at a young age, yeah. I think he's pushing maybe early twenties right now. He's a young guy, got plenty of time yeah. left in his career, you know? So um, just stack up the wins. And I think that was a great thing for athletes yeah. and musicians and yeah. um, just anybody in life to hear. Yeah. That was awesome. So, oh yeah. It's a universal message that everybody can yeah. use old, young, doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Wow. Well, Kenny, man, much respect, dude. We love you even more so yeah. now. One of the coolest guys, and I'm, I was so jacked up. Most definitely. Him, so, um, <laughs> but we got one more tonight, um, you guys. Um, one more final nightcap. Um, we have a special guest, Joel Jones, stopping by. Um, lady, uh, the lady who has done so much for the comic book industry has wrote for Marvel, Dark Horse, DC. I yeah. can't say enough about this lady's influence on female artists. So that's mm. going to be our nightcap. Not to take away from what Kenny did, but we got one more. So I'm excited to get to that. We'll take a breather yeah. and come back. So thank you, uh, uh, Kenny, all of you that made yeah. this possible worldwide. Don't forget that we love you. And Dane? <clears throat> thank you for listening.